Well, I think it's going to be a very exciting race. I think with this course, the way you've got options for the north side and the south side, it's going to be quite interesting to watch the tactics playing out. It's not just going to be a straight chase the leader. It's going to be a bit more intelligent racing. The first part of the course is the traditional start at the beach, go up Laroon and go to Ori. We've seen that before and pretty much every time I've been there, the conditions have been the same. So that first section is kind of hot and sweaty, lots of little short glides, lots of running on the road and trying to restart. And then from Ori down, that's where the real flying starts. So everybody is racing as fast as they can to get there because once you're in the air at Ori, you really start opening up the miles between you and the chase pack. I haven't seen any significant tracks that guys have flown from Laroon to Ori. That seems to be a very inverted, low, kind of stable section. But at least it's at the beginning of the race, so you're full of enthusiasm and energy when you tackle it. And then by the time you're running out of energy, you've got to Ori and you can coast a bit on your glider, hopefully. So that's going to be the game for the first two days, is, is just that sprint run to Ori. The third turn point now is very interesting, because instead of being a turn point centered around Anna Yet, which meant that you had to go along the front, the, the sort of west-southwest side of the of the Pyrenees spine, they've now got uh, Midi de Assao, which is a 5,000 meter radius turn point, which means that you can clip it from the north side or the south side and still be staying out of the airspace. There's a there's a national park airspace that runs along the spine there that athletes have to be careful of that because it's it's sitting on the top of the spine of the Pyrenees and it's it's on the French side and it's a big national park airspace that prevents you from crossing the Pyrenees spine. So the 5000 meter radius means that you can fly into that turn point and out again without getting into the airspace but you have to commit because of the airspace line there you are kind of committing to being on the north side for quite a long section or being on the south side and that's going to be interesting to see what pilots do there because the traditional route is on the south side on the Spanish side it gives you easier, longer lines with big ridges, faster conditions, and probably is your likely route to take. But it really depends on the weather. If you get to Ori and you've got a, a moderate northerly wind, um, going on the south side means that you might be in the lee and you might have spillover sort of clouds, fern clouds coming over from the French side, which could put you down. So pilots might opt to go on the north side through the French area. And that is looks to be a lot trickier. When I've been up there, I've looked over on the French side and thought, ooh, that's going to take some very technical flying to get through there because the valleys are not lined up in a nice fashion. I think we're going to see some pilots go that way just to do something different and have, have different options. There is then a, a run from turn point five to turn point four, which is the the line that would, they would be coming in on, which will then be an out and return. Basically, the other pilots will be going from turn point four to turn point five, and again, it could give those athletes a bit of an advantage if they've already done the turn point five four run. They know the terrain and they can return on it, um, and I think that little is going to be a bit of a race track because. Again, once you get to turn point five, to go to turn point six, you might choose to come straight back to turn point four again, just to get yourself past Casajon to run on the south side again. So that that the piece that I would investigate if I was if I had some time before the race would be that piece between turn point four and turn point five. Definitely want to fly that and and work out the road options and relaunching there. From Torbon to Bigor, it's going to be really tricky because 
there's only two main roads, both that go through tunnels, and the rules state that the, the athletes aren't allowed to go through any tunnels. Yeah. But for the supporters, it's going to be really tricky to, to actually get to their guys on that section because the two roads that go north-south are so far apart. No, it is, it is a big challenge, and, and you really want to do that section in the air because it's going over the main spine of the Pyrenees. You know, it's, it's a really big, significant mountain range to cross on foot. Doing it in the air is quite challenging. You know, if you've got a light one day with a high cloud base, it's fine. You can just get up to clouds and glide over. But most of the time that I've been there, the wind is pulling over that spine pretty strongly. That you get lee side sort of fern conditions either on the north side or on the south side of that spine, depending on which way the wind's pushing. So either way that you cross, you, you're you going to be dropping into very bad air on the lee side. It favors being high and being able to do it on a light wind day. And if you get there and the wind's strong, it, it's a significant challenge that requires quite careful piloting. Okay, so from Bigo, they're running down to, to Pedraforca. Um, that that area, I remember watching the race replay last year and seeing uh, Jesse Williams doing particularly well through that area on the ground. But some of the other athletes got stuck there and got lost and got tired. It's very, very hard groundwork through there. I would really want to be in the air around that section because it's it looks like lots of windy little trails and there aren't any roads that really line up nicely with the course direction so it's going to be a lot better for athletes to be in the air and gliding rather than fighting through on the ground there okay pedro Forca is just a little bit uh, further west than last year at Bergueda. That's a pretty good place to relaunch from if you're on the ground. It's a, a peak that's standing out from the Kadi Mountains, so you should be able to get airborne again there regardless of the wind direction, as long as it's not too strong. And then the obvious route is to fly along the ridge to the east and try and make your way across to Kanigo. And there's some fairly big ridges that you can hop across to and relaunch on. So I think we're going to see all of the athletes being on the south side of that ridge unless they get pushed over by some kind of inclement weather they're going to be on the south side approaching Kanigo, which is the logical side i think more thermals you've got a big ridge that leads you up and then the turn point will be an interesting push to get back quite deep if it's a southerly wind um, around Kanigo. Now, that looked quite tricky in the last edition. Kriegel managed to get the slip on the other guys and get the turn point and glide off just before the end of the day. And the other two guys that were chasing him were only kilometers behind him, but that made the difference in the race. That gave him a big advantage. So I think it's going to be a fairly critical section of the race because it will filter out the, the lead pack pretty effectively. I think that flying gets pretty tricky around Kanigo in that you've got the sea pretty close and you've got mountains from Kanigo inland so you're definitely going to have a sea breeze pulling in which is going to make the thermals weaker, it's going to make things tricky and it's going to be really hard getting from Kanigo all the way through to Gol. And I think that's that's where you'll see the really excellent pilots pulling out tricks to get through the very difficult terrain, once you go from Kanigo and you glide across to Seret and then you've got a, a little ridge to get over, I would expect there to be some kind of convergence setting up there at some time in the day because you've got a sea mass on the southeast and a sea mass on the, on the northeast pulling in air on both sides of that mountain. So the pilots that can puzzle out that convergence and link onto it might be able to pick their way through to the goal. Um, having said that, I haven't seen a lot of successful cross-country flying through there. Um, I might be wrong, but I think those mountains are particularly tricky. And a lot of the races were walking. They basically glided from Kanigo down and then walked a big section 
in the hot flat plains to get to the the point to fly down to goal so you know if somebody can can pick their way through those mountains uh, it will make up for a lot of ground right right at the end of the race what i would expect all pilots to hit as soon as they cross this range the final range of mountains that's leading towards the last turn point um, they're likely to have the wind coming from the sea and making it really difficult and the climbs getting really low and weak and scrappy so i think that last bit of the race it's very well designed actually it makes it harder right near the end and the pilots are going to have to fight all the way to make ground to get into goal so that makes for an exciting finish you know anything can happen in that last 60 k's from Cunningham to goal and I, I would say you know the first 20 k's of that's easy that's a glide down and sort of losing height but then the last 40 k's is really tough so good luck to the guys and it's going to be hot and they're going to be tired so <laughs> that's 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 where it really is an advantage to be a good pilot and be finishing the race in three or four days because you're not completely exhausted but um, the guys that are a little bit slower they've had to put in the same level of energy but for a much longer time so you know when you come in there after six days it's really really hard that last little piece <laughs>